I've just touched down at the world's favourite airport, Singapore Changi, but I'm not here on a stopover. I've come here for a week of adventures in the city-state that's at the crossroads of the world and more compelling than ever. Singapore is on the way to almost everywhere and the airport is a fun palace with runways attached. Yet the city-state is a dazzling destination in its own right with a rich ethnic mix, a fascinating history and a warm welcome for visitors, plus a feast of new experiences for the 21st century traveller. Exciting and relaxing, delicious and dazzling, a city of dreams is open, welcoming and waiting for you. The best way to get your bearings in Singapore is to take the lift 56 floors up to the Sky Park observation deck at the top of the Marina Bay Sands. Singapore is the diamond-shaped island at the southern tip of the Southeast Asian Peninsula and from altitude you can see how this grand geographical finale became a great world city. The constantly changing skyline has some new stars with a helix theme. Great experiences are in the Singapore DNA and the Helix Bridge was inspired by that very molecule. The crossing looks impossibly delicate, yet 3D software was used to create a unique structure that has immense strength. The Helix motif continues on Sentosa Island, where Sky Helix offers a panoramic high altitude ride. Yes, those are my feet dangling 79 metres above sea level. This is like no other viewing experience I've ever had. There's a dozen of us enjoying the view. It's just like a dinner party with friendly people, but you are gently rotating, seeing spectacular visions of the Singapore skyline, the islands of Indonesia, and a sense of immense fun. The range of places to stay has never been wider. Good morning, welcome to the Port of Singapore. Good morning, sir. You could choose the classic Raffles Hotel with its rich heritage. Yes, Thank you. Alternatively, the sustainable and spectacular Park Royal Collection Marina Bay, or re-energise at the Shangri-La Raza Sentosa, an island property beautifully located between the rainforest and the beach. Gastronomy is part of the joy of Singapore with so much choice of venues and cuisine. Start your evening 39 floors above the Singapore streets at Mr Stork, the open air bar at the top of the Andaz. Order a locally brewed beer to heighten the appreciation and sharpen the appetite. Back at street level, the Hawker Centre is a great Singapore concoction. All manner of vendors, each with their own culinary specialism, compete for custom. Choose what takes your fancy, then take a seat. There are dozens of Hawker Centres dotted around the city, but my favourite is right in the middle, Lao Pa Sat, which occupies a former Victorian market that was built in Glasgow in 1894 and shipped over in parts to be assembled locally. Ever since then, it's been satisfying appetites and thirsts. For the closest that Singapore gets to a national cuisine, head for Candlenut, the first Michelin-starred Peranakan restaurant. Peranakan people are descendants of the earliest Chinese settlers in Singapore, and they include the celebrity chef Malcolm Lee. You know, Singapore, we are very 
um, we are very open to new influences and ideas, even in cuisine. And sometimes, you know, in the pursuit of this, we we don't really appreciate or realize what's at our doorstep. And that's where we see and and enjoy sharing this kind of food uh, uh, with people. Peranakan people comprise one of the many strands of Singapore's cultural embroidery. Their art and traditions are championed by Alvin Yap, who's turned his home into an alluring museum known as the Intan. The collection of Peranakan artefacts is open by appointment to delight and enlighten visitors. Peranakans, we men, we used to wear many, we wear many hats, you know. At home, we become very... Um, Malay. We wear batik, we wear sorrow, we eat with our hands, we speak Baba Malay. But when we go to work, we put on a Chinese uh, jacket. Charming and colourful homes created by the Peranakan community enliven the Ju Chiat district. While back in the centre, you can unlock the past inside the former Empress Place building, now home to the Asian Civilizations Museum and senior curator Nura Bint Azul Kifli. This region has been phenomenally important for um, you know, cross-cultural interactions since many, many centuries ago. Among Singapore's mosaic of cultures, I adore Kampong Galam, especially Haji Lane, home to some intriguing street art and a location to quicken the pulse. Then to slow things down, step into Aramza, the only garden spa in Singapore, and leave the city behind. With every moment, you feel your body and soul being replenished. The only pressure is from the massage. Finally, in a pool of tranquility, you can soak up the ambience, rest and recharge for the next Singapore experience. The Botanic Gardens are very close to the city centre and provide plenty of space for exercise and enjoyment. Before the working day begins, the gardens play host to Qi Zhong, the ancient ritual that tunes the human body to perfection. A 21st century Singapore vision was to create a city in a garden. The result, Gardens by the Bay. I'm on cloud nine in the cloud forest at Gardens by the Bay beside a 35 meter indoor waterfall clad with plants from around the world. Also part of Gardens by the Bay is the Super Tree Grove, sustainable vertical gardens housing more than 60,000 plants. What a work of horticultural imagination to create this Super Tree Grove and then link it with a high-altitude walkway. From two feet to two wheels, I love the rail corridor, a train line reinvented as a bike path carving through Singapore. And along the coast, a round island loop for hikers and bikers is taking place, part of the Green Plan 2030, designed to make the outdoors even more accessible as Singapore transitions into a city in nature. Singapore is much more than a single island. It's an archipelago with no fewer than 64 islands waiting to be discovered. There are regular ferries out to some of the southern islands such as St John's and Kusu. But of all the fascinating fragments of land decorating offshore Singapore, the most atmospheric is Pulau Ubin in the northeast, where you can leave the high rises behind and enjoy a more rustic experience. Pulau Ubin is the location for the last surviving kampong, or traditional Southeast Asian village in Singapore. It's a lovely, relaxed, fun vibe. Singapore makes all the miles worthwhile. What a way to end my week. I've been coming to Singapore for decades and it's been wonderful to watch the city-state grow. But over the past seven days, I've been amazed at the increasing harmony between humanity and nature in this great 21st century city. 
I hope you all make your own journey here very soon. Goodbye.